Um, uh, I put the title Understanding and Translating Miyamoto Musashi's Mind, so I will give um, a few uh, glimpses of the book uh, and a few a short uh, introduction of uh, Miyamoto Musashi. And I will start, I want to start uh, with reminding you on the topics, uh, the main uh, topics of Bushido. Uh, and then I will go into the uh, book of Five Rings and then I will uh, give some glimpses of the translation process, as I said. Now, <clears throat> When we talk about Miyamoto Musashi, as he is known all around the world as uh, a strategist and the, with the book uh, titled The Book of Five Rings, uh, we're talking about uh, Bushido, the way of the samurai or the way of the warrior. Uh, now, this book can be uh, taken uh, superficially as a technical book uh, that a, a, a talented uh, swordsman is uh, teaching uh, his uh, uh, techniques to his uh, disciples, but it's more than that. We'll see how that is true. Now, uh, when I uh, look at this text uh, or any other uh, Japanese or um, other you know, uh, texts written in kanjis, uh, I'd like to uh, focus on the uh, uh, kanjis. And the kanjis give me uh, some ideas about the concepts uh, or they're representing as uh, ideograms or logographs. So the, uh, this kanji, uh, I want to take your attention to this kanji. It is uh, bu or mu in Japanese. Uh, and it means art of war any, or anything related with uh, martial arts. So uh, we can this, uh, see this kanji in uh, budo, uh, the way of the art of war, or in buke, military families, or bujin, a warrior, uh, or bujutsu, martial arts, whaler, buyu, or samurai, uh, musha or busha, uh, again. Now, uh, let me remind you that this is the very, uh, uh, exactly the, the kanji, uh, the first uh, kanji of Musashi uh, himself this one so now when we go into it we will see that i divide the uh, kanjis into uh, its components i love this uh, process and uh, we see that there is uh, there are three components one uh, to stop and uncertainty so uh, when i read this kanji i come to a, a, a definition uh, a let's say unique definition of uh, the art of war that is to unite uh, or to bring together uh, in order to stop uncertainty well this is a hint uh, of how i uh, process the kanjis and the compound uh, words uh, when i'm translating so when we talk about bushido the concept itself was introduced to the uh, western uh, world uh, in uh, at the start of the 19th century by a Japanese national called um, Nitobe Inazo and the book uh, he wrote in English uh, as you can see the cover of Bushido the soul of Japan there he is introducing seven virtues of uh, Bushido uh, as you can see on the right uh, Gi Yu uh, Jin, uh, uh, Makoto or Shin, uh, that is, you know, as, as it is written there, justice, bravery, benevolence, veracity, politeness, honor, loyalty. But these are uh, virtues or characteristics that you can assign or you can attribute to any warrior classes if you uh, want to promote them or if you want to, you know, uh, introduce them in a go uh, good way. So I was not that satisfied with this uh, Bushido uh, let's say definition from the start and when i looked back into the history of japan i come uh, across a, a certain period where ritsuryo system the uh, uh, preliminary steps towards a, a japanese state uh, or, or formation or organization uh, there is a, a system that is introducing uh, 603 AD and it's called the Kanji Junikai at the 12th level cap and rank system there I come across uh, very similar kanjis that we can see here okay Jin uh, was uh, there in uh, the 
uh, Nito Beginazo's book. And also, uh, Guy was there. Uh, Ray was there. The rest were, okay, uh, different. So I was, I, I started suspecting if uh, uh, the uh, content of Bushido uh, could be explained in a different manner, or uh, could I find any similarities in, uh, or similar, let's say, descriptions throughout uh, uh, Japanese history. So uh, this is the uh, place that I find it uh, in the, se the, the start of the seventh uh, century. So here you can see toku, that means virtue, and jin, rei, uh, shin, gi, and chi. So this brings me to a point that I realized these are the uh, five confucian virtues of a leader. They are called gojo or five constants, and they are taken as the basis of state formation in uh, the early Japan, ancient Japan, for that matter. So what are they? These are empathy, morality, manners or etiquette, knowledge, and trust. I find these traits in the Japanese uh, uh, people's um, attitudes, behaviors, or there is an appreciation that I can sense uh, towards uh, these values uh, in Japanese people. I'm sure you might have realized if you're uh, familiar and you have, uh, you know, spent some time with the Japanese, uh, they are quite um, sensitive in these uh, uh, virtues, even now. The, the reason is that the samurai had, as you know, shaped the Meiji Reformation, Restoration, and uh, their values uh, that they accumulated throughout the Edo period had uh, been, uh, let's say, um, the, the basis of the education system, popular education system uh, during the Meiji Restoration period. So these are also uh, the values that are still represented in the culture of the Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. So whenever you say Jingi Rei uh, in uh, today's Japan, people would be irritated because they don't really know the basis, uh, the, the, the value of these virtues in their own history. They, they uh, associate it with the uh, mafioso type of worldview, which is not. Now, uh, another um, important phrase or a concept in uh, Bushido is Chigyo Goitsu, uh, which means the unity of knowledge and action. So if you know something, you should act accordingly, uh, or otherwise vice versa. If people are taught uh, how to act, they should also become wise people. So that's that's what I see in Japanese people. They, they, they are keen on showing their uh, respect to other people with their manners. Without showing it, it doesn't have any meaning uh, for uh, uh, the neo-confucian uh, understanding of, uh, let's say, uh, leadership. Now, this is another, yet another uh, concept that you come across when you talk about Bushido. Bum buryodo, it means the twofold way of brush and sword. Or, in other words, it means bun, uh, culture, and martial arts, or let's say fine arts and martial arts uh, should be united together in the life of a samurai. That's what we see in the life of uh, Miyamoto Musashi. He's a, as we will talk about him, he's a, uh, he's the most famous swordsman uh, throughout Japanese history, but he's also an artist, a talented artist, uh, you know, known in Japanese art history. So he means, or Bushido uh, contains this concept, uh, of creative leadership as I see it. Now, these bring us to uh, certain uh, concepts in uh, Japanese understanding of beauty and aesthetics for that matter, which are basically mentioned in the book of Okakura Tenshin, the book of tea. Uh, so it is like Shibumi, which means silent magnificence, if you ask me. That's how I uh, like to uh, translate it. Uh, mono no avare, which means awareness of imper impermanence of things. 
or Wabi Sabi, which all of you I'm sure uh, 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 familiar with, uh, is the appreciation of transience and imperfection. So, Okakura attention. Uh, the reason what we're, uh, why we are uh, here uh, together uh, today. Now, I'd like to give uh, some uh, brief information about uh, uh, Miyamoto Musashi himself. He was born in 1584 and uh, died in 14, uh, 1645, and he wrote the Book of Five Rings in a cave uh, in uh, 1643. He finished it then, then uh, his writing, his manuscript, uh, and, well, he, he was ill, uh, and he uh, he died soon after he finished his manuscript. Now, uh, he's a popular uh, personality figure in Japanese uh, people's uh, understanding of their history. Uh, there are many legends about him. You can see uh, the uh, images, depictions of Miyamoto Musashi fighting with uh, several, um, let's say, beasts or, uh, well, many uh, modern uh, depictions, as you can see here, so many movies. I mean, this is just an example of uh, uh, telling the story of Miyamoto Musashi and others, Musashi, other uh, popular uh, depictions. And you can see the famous duel with Sasaki Kojiro uh, at Ganyujima, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, pictured in an ukiyo-e, and uh, this is the uh, sculpture showing uh, that famous duel in Ganryujima. Now, uh, this is a book, the very famous uh, popular uh, popular history book uh, written by uh, Yoshikawa Eiji. Uh, the uh, content, the uh, text was published um, in Asahi uh, Shimbun, Asahi, the, uh, the newspaper between uh, 19 and uh, 35 and 39, mm -hmm. and later on it was published together uh, as a collection. Um, and there are thousands of pages here. This got very popular uh, among Japanese people then, and then later on it really uh, impacted, it, it, it really affected the image of uh, the samurai um in the minds of the japanese people first but starting from there uh, the whole image uh, that we know of uh, about samurai globally so it is an important uh, text uh, um, maybe a, i don't know maybe a million uh, words or something now uh, nowadays as a hobby i will give myself time but i'm starting to uh, translate this whole text into turkish uh so well i i'm enjoying uh, i started a little bit and i'm enjoying the uh, uh, the content there anyhow so we now um, know that musashi is the master of uh, sword masters he had uh, experienced over 60 duels with uh, various uh, opponents and he was um, he was he was victorious now but in addition to that, he is a talented calligrapher uh, who is uh, mentioned in uh, Japanese art history. These are his uh, calligraphy works pieces. He is an artist, as you can see, um, of uh, Sumie, the Suibokugao, or the uh, ink painting. Uh, very few but uh, selected works are surviving today in various uh, museums. These are all his uh, masterpieces. He is a, a designer. He had designed uh, katana or parts of katana, accessories of katana, or a saddle, for example. He was a sculptor. You can see this is his work. There are very few uh, uh, pieces that he had left, but uh, they are appreciated by the art historians. And he is also a garden designer. He had designed several gardens in throughout Japan. Uh, and also, well, be, uh, let me not uh, forget to mention, he had designed a, uh, even a city, uh, urban planning uh, he had done. So he was a, a, a wise person, uh, respected throughout his time. He was a writer. He is the writer of the Book of Five Rings, uh, which is the topic of our talk today. Um, I, work, I started working on this uh, text uh, several years ago, but I uh, managed to uh, publish the book in 2017 first, but then 
Uh, there were other um, texts that he had left, so I uh, gathered them together again, and I translated them, and I have uh, created a, a, a full co uh, um, collection of his writings uh, in Turkish now. Uh, I can say that uh, with confidence. Now, uh, the Book of Five Rings. You see, it is translated uh, virtually to every, uh, almost every language in uh, the world. Uh, it was in Turkish, but the, uh, I was not satisfied, as I told uh, uh, you, uh, with the uh, translation. Everybody was thinking it is an in unintelligible book, unintelligible content. And, but they were thinking that uh, they had their problem. They couldn't understand it. No, the problem was the translation, the secondary translation was not good enough for people to understand his uh, uh, ideas. So uh, the first thing was to look for the uh, right uh, text there are uh, well first of all let me say uh, that uh, the original text is not surviving but there are uh, quite uh, uh, trustable uh, copies uh, early copies from his uh, writings uh, here you can see several uh, copies that survived today uh, from his time um, now um, I, I, I chose uh, the uh, authority uh, authoritative uh, text, uh, well, uh, accepted by many as the uh, final text, which is uh, recomposed uh, by the uh, specialists uh, uh, in order to form the final authoritative text uh, of uh, the Haruma uh, Miyamoto Musashi Kenkyukai, the research uh, society on Musashi's writings. Now, He's starting his text as, uh, uh, with an introduction of himself. I'm a samurai born in Harima province. He says, well, let me just abbreviate this because we are running out, out of uh, time. But here you can see that he is regarding uh, what he had lived, he had experienced until his uh, 30 uh, as mere uh, coincidence. He, he was victorious until then, but uh, he did not uh, feel like uh, he knew what he, he should have known. He realized uh, that, uh, he says, he realized that uh, I, I hadn't won those victories due to my maturity in art of war, then with the hope of reaching profound meaning of the way, I worked nonstop day and night, and I was 50 when I met the uh, way of art of war, naturally, he says. Since then, without having a way to look for, I'm looking, I'm living the shadow and light. So uh, there's a milestone uh, in his uh, 30, the duel with... Uh, the duel that I mentioned uh, a few slides ago, uh, because there at that uh, duel he was very close to dying himself. His chomage was chopped off by his opponent, so he was uh, he, he he after although he was victorious, he killed the other guy, the other uh, person. Uh, he, he he regretted and he uh, he did not uh, he, you know continue his duels as frequently as he did before. Now. And after, well, in his uh, late years, he, he wrote this book. In his book, well, the, the text was not called, titled, The Book of Five Rings. He did not give that title. The title is given later on. But what he did was to give the chapter names uh, with uh, the five elements. So the five rings, if you may. Ground, water, fire wind and void they all stand for an element in uh, the buddhist or uh, uh, let's say uh, taoist uh, meaning in sanskrit and pali we know that th this concept has come from uh, india uh, the concept of mahabuddha great element uh, which is earth water fire, air, and uh, space, akasha. But we also come across uh, this concept in Aristotle, uh, in his book uh, On the Heavens, uh, written in uh, 350 BC. Uh, well, uh, I'm not into which one was first or uh, uh, which preceded the other, but the concepts are quite similar. It is a shared concept in uh, uh, Aristotle's world and in India. Uh, as we know, uh, uh, Alexander the Great was the student 
uh, of Aristotle. So uh, there might be a connection there, but you know, it has to be, a, it deserves more uh, study there. Anyhow, uh, Aristotle is uh, describing uh, five elements, uh, earth, water, air, uh, fire, and ether, um, which is, well, this composition is, as you can understand, is different than the Chinese understanding, the Confucian uh, understanding of the five elements, uh, which is uh, called the Gogyo in, uh, in Japanese, uh, which is, well, which is, which has wood and metal uh, differing from uh, these five elements. Now, that's another topic. Now, the five rings or the Gorin is not circular. That was the first thing that I realized, and I was, uh, well, this was my first discovery, and I, I was very happy to do that because it, 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 it triggered my curiosity to learn more about what uh, it meant in, uh, the, uh, in this context. Uh, and you can see uh, these uh, uh, towers, the, uh, the towers of five rings, uh, in many temples, Buddhist temples uh, in Japan, and as you can see, uh, ground uh, is a cube, and sphere, a pyramid. Water, fire is a, a, is a, a, a described as a represented by a, a sort of pyramid, and a half moon or a half sphere uh, represents wind, and an almond shape uh, part uh, representing the void. Now, you, as you can see. Still in Japan, uh, these are these carry these towers carry Sanskrit from ancient times. Now, what he is saying about uh, well, in his book, in the Book of Five Rings, he is telling uh, many things. All right, you can read this text uh, in many levels, but in a philosophical level, uh, when you try to find the profound meaning that is. Uh, hidden uh, in this text, you will come across uh, 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 the uh, very concept of uh, ground. So what would it mean? Uh, the ground, in the ground book, he's telling everything about, uh, he, he's going to tell about in his uh, book. So um, he has designed his book in line with the uh, philosophical uh, implications of the five rings. So I put here a, a rather, uh, well, I find it's interesting because with ground, uh, we can understand uh, that uh, uh, it is the firm basis that uh, we can, we, we should, we, we are as human beings standing on. So it means it is the, um, let's say, it is the um, basis, the firm ground that we need for any sort of uh, procession or progress without a firm ground we cannot progress so it is our identity it is our uh history or it is what we are meant to do uh, this is how he grasps it too and he is uh, so we, we we without a firm ground we would fly uh like in uh, space as uh, the, the the image showed us so um he describes commanders, uh, leaders, or he likens them to carpenters or architects. And that was interesting, this concept. Dai means uh, big, great, and ku means uh, craft or creativity. So the grand craft is carpenter, and it also corresponds to commander or samurai or leader in uh, Musashi's book. So these are the characteristics for uh, a leader in Musashi's book, but you know we don't have to go into their details. But this is uh, uh, his words: On whichever you walk, if you master your craft to a sec uh, to a level second to none, you will glorify your name. This is the way of strategy, he says. So glorifying one's name is the way of the samurai. Is summarizing the way of uh, uh, the samurai, the bushido here. And that's why uh, samurai are willing uh, to die whenever uh, it's necessary or, uh, you know, um, uh, when we talk about the honor uh, cult, the cult of honor for the samurai, we mean this, glorify one's name. 
So with water, as the water can change its uh, shape and um, take the shape of the uh, utensil it goes into, he says, you should be flexible. You should change, be able to adapt yourself to different situations. And he's teaching his uh, sword techniques uh, in the water book. Uh, and here he says, Itsuku wa shinuru tenari. Itsukazaru wa itsuku, uh, ikiru uh, or ikuru tenari. So he means here, fixation is death. One who moves, lives. He says, if you have the power of knowledge, you can see the secrets of each and every environment. So uh, you should be flexible. Uh, I'm continuing to give a, a glimpses of uh, what he's telling in his book. Um, in the fire book, he's saying that uh, he likens uh, the fire to uh, fight, fire, uh, fi uh, uh, the war, the battle, the duel, uh, the action. So if you cannot control your, uh, as you cannot uh, control your power, uh, you cannot control uh, your fire, you will be uh, destroyed by it. Uh, he is telling uh, what one should do or the attitude one needs during a duel or, uh, let's say, count encountering with your rivals, uh, whether you are a, a, a single fighter or you are a commander of uh, large armies so he's giving the principles there uh, a, a an example there he says if you have to die you must die with all your weapons exhausted is it all right to die with your swords still on your belly i like this uh, quote you know uh he, he he's uh, recommending everybody or well for that matter his disciples and uh, the ones who read his uh, writings to use uh, uh, his or her potential to the end uh, and not to uh, you know to, to be courageous in uh, um, acting uh, for your uh, targets today if you can win against your yesterday self tomorrow you can beat novices and later you will beat masters he's emphasizing um, the uh, the importance of working hard. Now, the fourth book is the book of wind. As the wind comes uh, from uh, far away and brings smells, odors, and sounds uh, to us, he says, uh, we must know what the others think, what the others uh, feel like, what the others live like, uh, in order to understand that our path, our way is uh, correct. Uh, we should respect the ways of others, but we should learn and uh, uh, try to perfect our own. One who knows not the others will know not himself, he says. And he says, beware, any tiny deviation from your way today will evolve into a large deviation by time. Wanting and excess in all things are the same. Now, the final book, to my surprise, was only a few uh, 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 paragraphs and it it is only a, a page, a single page at the end, and it is the Book of Void. He, he implies that uh, if you have come to this level, you should be able to understand what uh, Void is. So I will not bother you with lots of words. Uh, so he just gives a few keywords for Void. Now, Void is that anything is extant, anything extant is in fact non-extant, Therefore, naturally, void is non-extant too. If you know the extant, you can understand the extinct. And by time, you will understand the meaning of the void. So, this was an interesting concept that I had to ponder about. What Musashi understood from the void, what we should understand or what we can drive out some lessons from this concept was an interesting topic for me uh, for a long while so what i want to share what i have you know i have the feeling that i have understood with you so uh as i always do i just divided the kanji into its components separated them and looked into them because it is it is contained i believe in this very logograph it is composed of three components. First of them, this tense uh, for, um, let's say, roof, 
It is a, it, 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 it means roof or dome for that matter. Well, space, dome, all right. Well, he's mean, it, is, it, it means the, 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 the dome that is covering uh, the whole uh, world. So that's why it's here. The second part stands for legs and it symbolizes, it is the symbol of action, moving, progress. And the third one means creativity. I, I hope you can remember uh, a few, uh, several slides ago, I gave uh, you the daiku, the, the word uh, used for carpenter or architect. The same uh, kanji was there and it means creativity or craft. So, well, this is deep, I thought, because for this way of thinking, this worldview, void is both creative and active. So it, it is, let's say, evolving in existence and it's giving birth to action and it's giving uh, or triggering uh, creation. Well, I thought, well, the, the, the person who had designed uh, probably about 4,000 years ago, this kanji uh, is, uh, deserves uh, respect in my eyes. So, I also found some uh, co correlations with my own uh, culture because I had uh, written a, a book on Sufism too, uh, years ago. Um, so, uh, here uh, in Zen, uh, we can see, uh, we know that there are three levels in existence. Uh, first is you, second level is Mu, and the third level is Ku. We did the same uh, concept, the same kanji. Existence from the lowest level, uh, negation of existence, and a higher level, the final level, is the void. In Sufism, in Islam, in the way that uh, uh, I saw, I mean, not in the superficial, but in the philosophical part, the Sufi uh, understanding of Islam, I came across a similar concept. It is called the Terki Dunya, and uh, it means, uh, well, I will talk about the, uh, the, its meaning, and Terki Ukpa and Terki Terk, which uh, mean uh, abandonment of the mundane. The Sufis praised this, the mundane, the worldly, so the, he, he, he or she sacrifices this mundane world and uh, uh, tries to reach to a second level. It is the abandonment of the otherworldly, but what uh, impressed me was uh, uh, I came across a similar uh, concept and it's the abandonment of abandonment itself. Well, Food for thought, I keep uh, thinking about these concepts uh, myself. So, uh, in the book, uh, uh, he says, what is one of his uh, final remarks, uh, Musashi's, ones who grasp the true meaning of the way can distance themselves from it. They move on the way to, of strategy with inner freedom and reach a natural but mysterious for others uniqueness. At one point, I realized that the this word was uh, crucial, uh, uh, the key in understanding Musashi, because he had written uh, uh, later, after he had written this manuscript of Five Rings, uh, he had written uh, uh, 25, uh, 21 precepts, which he called Dokodo, which is also published, translated and published in uh, English language as the way to isolation or the way of uh, loneliness. But I was suspicious, you know, after knowing what uh, Musashi is thinking, uh, after knowing, uh, uh, having an idea of how he is thinking, I was saying, this, he's not talking about being lonely. He shouldn't be talking about loneliness. There should be something more into it. And I looked into the uh, kanji, as I always do, I said, and and I, uh, again, uh, separated the uh, uh, components and I came to this understanding. Uh, uh, when I first published the first version, 
I translated this uh, trans, uh, 21 pre precepts as um, not walking alone or something. The way to uh, independence, this very word also can mean independence. But when I came to the, uh, uh, when the first uh, uh, version, the first edition was, it finished, to my surprise, it finished very rapidly. I prepared the second edition. And at the second edition, I was pondering, and I came uh, to the right conclusion. He meant the way to uniqueness, my dear friends. He's talking about uniqueness. He is concerned about being unique as an artist, being unique as a think thinker, unique as a, a writer. Even when he uh, designed his book, he was... Uh, targeting to be unique that's the reason his his text is surviving today 400 years later at geographies that he would never have known languages that he, he would never have known and probably he will be living for another thousand years i admire him in that sense and i hope my text uh, would be the same so he's talking about the way to uniqueness uh, here, I will just give a give glimpse to you, uh, a, a point that I was, as a translator, I had to uh, think uh, many times and revise my translation. Well, this is translated into English. Do not act following customary beliefs by uh, Sherab Chojin Kohn uh, in 2006, his life and writings. This is not correct, my dear friends. This is not a correct translation of these words. Uh, at my first version, I translated this as, look after your body well. Goods have no meaning because this mono means good. And when it is written in uh, uh, hiragana, and there is no kanji, you are, you, you are in trouble as a translator. What does it mean? So uh, your, your tendency is to, uh, collaborated with something that you know. Imi, uh, at that point, meant uh, meaning to me. You know, it literally means meaning. But at the second uh, edition, uh, when I was thinking and preparing the second edition, I realized, and it was it was enlightening. It was, I, I said, Eureka. <laughs> uh, uh, because uh, there was a concept called mono imi. The mono is the same. But Imi is different. It was written with uh, another country. And now it had uh, the right meaning. It, now it meant, the phrase meant, do not try to fast. It, it not, you know, fast, to do fasting uh, to a level that can damage your body. Now I was satisfied with my translation. There were many cases uh, that I feel, felt the same throughout uh, this text because this text was it written in 14 uh, 1643 and believe me uh, the, the japanese people of today uh, can have little meaning can drive little meaning out of his uh, text uh, the, the the original text nowadays so your contemporary japanese knowledge may not help you in understanding uh, that world okay this is the uh, monument that was um, uh, established by his uh, son in law uh, Iori uh, in Kyushu, in memory of his father. And here, well, this is also difficult because all kanji. Uh, so this is the memorial inscription for the valiant man who lives in two worlds, Niten, Iru. So he, this is you know very uh, nice way of putting it. He, he, it, uh, it it contains the meaning that he did not die, the way we know it who lives in two worlds. By the way, Niten is the name he had given to his uh, sword techniques school. The school still uh, survives today. Shin uh, Musashi Harunobu from Harima Pranis Akamatsu clan, it says. And finally, uh, this was also uh, uh, the final words uh, in that uh, monument. Look up to the skies with reverence, it says, because for the art of war, which has reached the truth, that is not an end. Well, this is also interesting because uh, there is no subjective. The subject is 
the art of war. So it is uh, uh, establishing a parallel with the figure of uh, uh, Musashi with the art of war itself. Hey ho. So, okay. Well, that was an interesting uh, point for me. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, listening uh, to my talk. I, I hope I did not uh, bore you or talk uh, too much and I hope you could uh, follow me. Uh, I'm pushing uh, uh, the stop presenting button, okay? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I, I can, uh, I can yeah, take it up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, one thousand uh, security, please. Yeah, please. All right. Uh, um, uh, I hope uh, you could see all my slides. You could hear everything. Uh, I was so uh, anxious after what happened uh, at the start. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, listening. That's my presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Yalda Yalchin. It was very interesting and very difficult subject you chose. And in your uh, subject itself, your uh, specialization and the words which you chose are in the topic, understanding translation of Miyamoto Musashi's mind. Uh, it is really uh, very true that while you are translating the personality like Musashi and his philosophy, you have to have the understanding of his mind and very interesting way you have how you have combined the kanjis and the words and the, all the kanjis were so, you know, the time of Musashi's is very tough time. The war time is there, of course, but the language wise also, because we are, I may, I'm not proficient, proficient of that language of that time. I am especially, my specialization is modern Japanese literature. We learn, we, we, I teach and learn and read also through modern, uh, through the translation only, Genji Monogatari, Hojoki, and all these. Uh, Classical Japanese literature, we read through Japanese modern uh, translated text and, uh, side by side. So it is very difficult text which you chose and the subject also. And it is very interesting that you, uh, especially kanji and the semiotic nature of the, uh, this the kanjis. And I wish at today my all the students from the department, those who are learning kanjis as well as the four combination of the kanjis, you know, the subject is vast. Today's subject is vast. It's not only on translation, but the philosophy of Bushido and the way you have described even the boo. Boo has got many meanings and you have uh, analyzed this kanji itself. And the uh, later on uh, you go, you went to Gojo and then uh, all these uh, five philosophies of uh, Confucianism philosophies then Shingire and Bumburyo, though, and all these things are very uh, interesting and very philosophical and very difficult to understand. The, in the way you have explained, it was so simple and interesting way. So, and I agree with your one point that in the beginning of your introduction, you said that translation has to be from the original, not from the translated text or from the English or from the maybe Indian languages from Hindi to Malayalam or to other languages. Uh, the, since I would like because I would like to say why it is very important to translate uh, from uh, original Japanese to your own language like your Turkey language or in, in Hindi I have been translating in Hindi because while I was doing my PhD also I I found that some of the English translations were uh, you know uh, some of the very uh, even the Denle who translated Higuchi Ichiyo's uh, stories they were over generalization because we have the Orient culture and the Japanese and the Indian languages or the Hindi especially are semantically and structure wise grammatically they are very similar. Not only the grammar but the English is very far off from the I want the loss of meaning maybe sometimes it is because of the over generalization or the because of the cultural differences between the target and the source, source language 
or the product of certain constraint inherent in the target language. I therefore find that translating Japanese literature into Indian languages or Hindi equipped uh, on the account of its inherent uh, natural advantages and abilities in so far as I understand facilitate communications of moods, emotions, tone, situations and context. It is pertaining to the modern Japanese literature. Again, I'm saying that when you translate Bushido or Musashi's philosophy is totally, you have mixed up so many, you have uh, given us the knowledge of sculptures, kanjis, even kara. Kara, I found uh, immediately that karate, kara, okay, karate is such a big philosophy. It does come from there only because kara is empty and non uh, uh, does nothing and you bring something from out of nothing. So the whole philosophy, whole philosophy of Japanese culture at that time and even today is, I think, inside that Bushido and this five rings and all these, this inside this small book, though it is a small, but it is a big thing. It is not, uh, so uh, sometimes, um, and you have told about the uniqueness also, though the, uh, Uh, that, this uh, even I find that Mahabhuta and five concept of this wide wind, fire, water, ground is total philosophy of Japanese culture. Suchi, Suchi is used in everywhere. Nemawashi, you know, Suchi is grounded. You have to ground yourself in everything. Then only you can do something. So whole philosophy is coming from that Daiku concept and all these things. So I really enjoyed your uh, this thing. Saying I'm coming uh, to one point of uniqueness. Though this doko do, uh, doko do doko do the path of aloneness, the philosophy yes. that you have explained, and the the uniqueness is a different which the uniqueness which I found in modern Japanese literature, maybe I will give you some example of those uniqueness in the sentences and the sentence which was used that waga mini itari mono imi suru kotonashi. It is so true when you start translating, you know, literal, literal uh, translation. Sometimes you're so wrong in the beginning because when you teach, now also when I teach to my student and ask them to translate, uh, one line, first one line, it is very simple. Dictionaries are of no use because the, whatever meaning you take from that dictionary, like Sabishi, Shizuka, Yappari, uh, Bonyari, all these meaning have very uh, few, uh, all the, whatever meaning you have in the dictionaries, sometimes it is it cannot be used in the translation. You have to create you have to create according to the context. So sometimes in the exam also, if I give them the dictionary, dictionary is of no use in literary translation. Technical translations, of course, we use dictionary and it is helped. But literature translation is actually creation. And you take time. You It is not fast. You, you take time. You sit down. You first, you have to read the whole, like you did, you did so much of research before translating. You did so much of uh, like Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist uh, concept, uh, vocabulary, all these kanji combinations and the whole philosophy into that before going into the translation, actual translation. You have to read the time of the author, mind of the author, why he has written that and uh, 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 the, the, why he has written that and why, what, what is the intention of the author in that particular line, what is, author is dead. You have to analyze whatever you can think and whatever you have to, so for the background, for understanding that text, you have to go through for, and you cannot translate, like uh, if I give you one story, the, you translate first line, you cannot translate first line before reading it again and again, again and again, that is the, uh, when you do 
modern Japanese literature, because we are equipped with the vocabulary, we are equipped with the language. Most of the students in all over the university, all over world, I think they know Gendai Go more than the classical Japanese, Japanese language. So, and if you have to do Edo time uh, translation, it is very tough. It is, you have to read, I think you have to, Buddhist for Tate, Biruma no Tate Koto. Biruma no Tate Koto is the novel of modern, uh, the uh, post war, uh, uh, of uh, related to war during the war time. So it has got too much of philosophy, of Buddhist philosophy into it. The translator has to do so many discussions and to understand the Buddhist, Buddhist philosophy hidden into inherent in those uh, lines or novels. So it is so difficult to translate. So you have to read the story again and again. It is time consuming. I always say that technical translation is very easy to do. If you have a vocabulary, you can uh, uh, put word by word, but in literature translation, you cannot, you have to do the translation, keep it keep aside and then again revise, add it, improvise according to the readership. What, what readership is going to read? Because whatever your literal translation you have done, if you immediately publish or uh, make it into the uh, public uh, sphere, you bring it in, nobody will understand what is there uh, in that uh, text. And another thing is that today you are translating Musashi's book, Five Rings. If you suppose translate, try to translate some other philosopher's book, Two styles are different. It the translator has to keep those styles, you know, uh, perfectly. If some story is translated uh, by me of Kawabata, and again I will uh, translate uh, Akta Gavar, you know, Sukes Rashomon. I have already translated. So those two styles should be separately. And if Rashomon somebody reads or without knowing the author, one should understand. Oh, this is Akta Gava. This is uh, Kawabata Yasunari. So translation ha translator has got so much of work. He's, he's doing more than the author. I want to, I wanted to tell you about the, your uh, uniqueness of the, uh, I've taken two examples, like in Rashomon, uh, one paragraph was there about, uh, about Shigai. So no Shigai wa minna, then ei kyuni oshi no gotoku damatte ita. So this was very difficult for me that how come dead bodies can listen or talk? They are already dead. So, but do they speak also? So that is the uh, idiom or phrase of Japanese culture used here. So we have to give the equivalent in Hindi or Indian languages. So it was, uh, there were so many difficult, now I forgot because while I was writing, I forgot what to bring because I did my translation long back. So I, I forgot know. the exact example, actually difficult example, but lots of footnotes and explanations are being given in my translation because some of the, like Rashomon itself has to be given in the footnote. What is Rashomon? If I keep the title as it is, it is, I have to give Ichime Kasa, Obi, and uh, even the, those, uh, all these things should be, uh, should come with the footnotes and explanation what all these things are. Sometimes Sancho Dayu of Mori Ogai's novel, Takase Bune, all these uh, stories required historical footnotes. You have to do lots of research. It is not simple translation. It is not, you have to read the author, again, the historical uh, the points like uh, Kampaku and Shogun, Daimyo, you have to explain these things for the Indian readers. You have to give the footnotes, sometimes pictures also you have to provide. So in second uh, sentence, I want to say the specific to Japanese because Japanese people speak less, work more. Bugon jikkyo, jikko desu ne. Then, Oh yeah, then in another story, Gon Gitsune, one sentence is there, when Heiju kills the Gon Gitsune by mistake, 
and finally he comes to know that then god mukitsune actually helped me in my loneliness but i killed her so that oh yeah to he juwa bikkurishte god ni me o otoshimashita this simple sentence is very difficult to translate in hindi i will tell you why oya has got oya is the whole uh, this thing uh, the word brings the whole lot of guilt of so many days repent anger towards oneself that what have i done i killed the gon gitsune who was bringing lots of enables it tables every day quietly to help me in my loneliness but i thought she has come again to steal my unagi fish so that oh yeah itself because they speak less you have to uh, understand the whole philosophy in that here it is not that much that kind of philosophy which you have explained but another sentence is to hei ju wa bikkuriste gon ni me o otoshimash bikkuriste Now, bikkurish the uh, literal that Kinkyusha dictionary. What the bikkuri meaning is given in Kinkyusha will not fit here. It is guilt. It is paschatap. It is more than that. So the dictionary is not useful. Again, me o otoshi mashta. Drop the eyes. Brought down the eyes. Uh, bring down the eyes. Uh, eyes. Me o otoshi mashta. In Hindi, you have so many like. पलके झपकाना निगाहें झुकाना आंखें झुकाना नजरें झुका दी ऑल दिस नजरें झुकाना पलके झुकाना निगाहें झुकाना दीज थ्री एक्सप्रेशन है इन टारगेट लैंग्वेज ऑल्सो यू हैव टू थिंक विच निगाहें झुकाना इज करेक्ट हियर और नजरें झुकाना इज करेक्ट हियर और पलके झुकाना पलके झुकाना इज शर्म is hesitation of a girl when she is meeting to her boyfriend or to someone else is palki jhukana nazre jhukana is correct here so in hindi also in your target language also you have to think what expression shall i uh, write here aankhe jhukana is very simple so you have to be very versed with target and the source language so that way uh, i was just uh, thought of wagamini tari mono imi suru and sometimes the students do that mistake you know simply some place name is coming in izuno odori ko in uzun is in some place name they will translate even that place name also in the beginning then when they read the whole story then they come to know that okay and another thing you have talked about selecting of the text which text shall i use for the translation and in my case also it has happened that i have to suppose if i have to translate rasho mon hari take kurabe it is very difficult language i have to choose if i choose bunko bol that uh, iwanami bunko bunko is very difficult to read because there are no footnotes no explanation of the difficult world historical events so i chose always for my uh, this kodansha shonen shojo nihon bungaku gan this series has got lots of footnotes explanations everything is given there so you have to be very careful which text you have to use for your translation which will come handy to you because otherwise it, the uh, translation will be very difficult again i found that uh, uh, that you have translated gorin uh, that uh, five rings of uh, this as book it of five rings yes yes book of five rings as it is like given in the sometimes even i have translated rashomon like rashomon sanshodayu sanshodayu but sometimes you have to translate the titles also very difficult to translate tri- titles sometimes like yuki onna how will you translate in in, in english yuki onna is uh, snow woman but unless and until you read the story you will not come to know about the actual meaning of the title because yuki onna if you translate uh, snow woman the totally different meaning opposite meaning is coming it is barf sundari beauty of uh, that snow beauty snow beauty will be the right title same as Uh, kumono ito kumono ito is ra- aktagawa is no uh, uh, story kumono ito very difficult to translate the tr- title miminashi hoichi no hanashi is very difficult to translate 
and even uh, and a very good uh, translation i gave when uh, ogawa mimei's story nemui machi nemui machi neend ka shehar sometimes it is neend ka shehar but uninda shehar is much more better than neend ka shehar so you have to be very very it is very tough to even translate titles and uh, rashomon you have to keep it in japanese you cannot translate rashomon sometimes you have to translate titles of the books sometimes you cannot translate because the whole sense or the whole meaning of the translation will vanish if you translate the titles of the book sometimes you have to convey the whole philosophy through the through that title so that is my and sometimes you must have seen in your uh, that book also that japanese is very specific and unique language some because it is uh, effect if uh, the effect is coming first and the reason is coming cause and the reason is coming later on in izuno doriko so many times sometimes effect is coming like i will read you this one yo yaku toge no kita guchi no chaya ni tadori tsuite hotto suru to doji ni watashi wa sono iri guchi de tachitsukunde shimatta doshite tachitsukunde shimatta no desu ka why he stood without tell stand uh, stood still amari ni mo kitai ga migoto ni te kichu shita kara de aru because his expectation came truly he expected that odoriko will be there he will meet there but that tachits kunde shimatta till here we don't know why he he acted that way the whole story is going coming forth and back forth and back like this you have to read the whole story before getting into the actual act of translation you cannot understand anything so yeah i totally agree I with you in that thank you very much that's all i wanted to say today all and right thank you very 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 interesting and knowledgeable and it was i wish i my all uh, all student had listened to your lecture It thanks thank you so much thank you so much mita thank you very much domo arigatou gozaimasu ah yeah ano uh, osa narimashita arigatou gozaimasu shimde what um, well uh, the things that you have already uh, mentioned they also inspired me to say a few notes if you yeah, please me. please uh, because um, uh, what unita has said are uh, well each and every word i would uh, put my signature under it uh, because she is telling the truth i mean uh uh to my students too, for over 15 years now i'm i'm a historian but i'm giving uh translation lessons at the uh, translation level uh for the translators uh students uh, or departments but anyhow uh and the first thing that i tell to my students is you should of course had a good comment have a good comment of the source language that's that's a must yes okay but the more important thing is that you should know your own language the translator anybody who is uh, going to translate a, a foreign uh, source text has to have a confidence in his her own language, language your mother tongue and the first thing first rule is to love your own language please love your own language and be curious we try to learn many facades many features uh, more than anybody in your uh, home country uh, that's where we start i think uh, and one thing is that we should know that the uh, english translations are not necessarily the authoritative ones you should not take them as granted you should uh, suspect you should uh, question you should Uh, doubt uh, the uh, validity of their translations if you know both languages you know when i do i find many uh, mistakes every now and then or not mistakes but you know uh, uh, translation is a, a personal process in that sense you can translate even a haiku i give my 30 40 students the same haiku and they they manage to come up with different versions of their translation this is how it is uh at the final uh point you do you do your uh, some choices uh that's what makes it personal okay well that's that's something but uh please do not uh, accept uh, any other uh translation as it is you can do better uh if you are curious enough okay 
and uh, um, let's say, uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, yeah, you could, you can, you can change, you can do better, as I said. Well, these are the things that I wanted to mention. Uh, and one, one final thing, if yeah. I can, uh, if you allow me, I want to, uh, to announce something. Um, I am uh, the um, editor in chief of um, Global Perspectives on Japan. Uh, it's an academic journal. Uh, we are we are publishing. It's an e e journal. We are publishing it, it, it in Istanbul. Uh, so I believe that uh, international level uh, scholarship can also be published in uh, non Western uh, countries. So we are working hard for uh, several years now. There were very uh, difficult times uh, of budgeting and etc. But we managed to make it a, a stable uh, publication. Uh, we will uh, publish the fifth uh, issue uh, next March. I know it is too much a short notice, but please uh, be uh, free to submit anything that you uh, are considering uh, to publish uh, and you did not yet contact any place. Or you can publish, uh, if you want to publish a book review, a comment, commentary, uh, you name it. You just have to go to, uh, if you write in Google, Global Perspectives on Japan, you will come across to the uh, the website there and you will see the former issues. You can download them. It's open access. Uh, and we can start, uh, you know, collaborating uh, in the non-Western uh, world, if you, uh, if you like. Okay? So I would be very happy, even if you have short time, you can submit anything you want. Uh, to be published, uh, we will consider it. All right, thank you, thank you so much to have uh, uh, having me here today. I, I, uh, I well, I mean, probably we have a couple of time. Maybe we have some a few minutes if somebody wants to ask somebody to professor, you know, Adal. I mean, it's not. I mean, I have a lot of questions in bed. I don't, I don't know if I have time or not. In bed, uh, at least six questions I, I noted down. And in fact, the first thing, you know, Professor, I mean, Dr. Edel, yesterday we had, uh, I, I am from Nichibunken, Kyoto, and uh, yesterday we had one professor. Have you ever heard about Inaga Shigemi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard, I didn't meet in person, but. Oh, actually, uh, he, 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 he was delivering his retirement lecture uh, yesterday uh, at my institute, and he was talking about Keikoron. Keiko means practice. Your Keiko, Bijutsu mm -hmm. yeah. Keiko. And yeah. he he devoted a whole slide on your things actually. I mean, including your photograph, image photograph. Yeah, so that is yeah, did, uh, sorry, sorry. Did you did you did, did you say he mentioned me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what. Oh I wow, saying. wow, yeah. that's something. Yeah, yeah. So that that could be one coincidence, but I just wanted to inform you that. So no, no. Is, what, what what did he say? Did he sell good things? He, he was talking about aikido basically, aikido run. And he was, in fact, talking started from uh, whole origin of kanjis from China and how those things are transferring things. A lot of things. Actually, if I, I did know, I could have been invited today to this talk. In fact, I, I missed actually. But one, uh, wow. there is one okay. thing. Uh, one thing probably Tanka Sensei, Brits Tanka Sensei might have a lot of questions. And we have another questions here from uh, somebody here. Somebody wants to ask somebody. Uh, yes. Ah, Janu Shuti Sensei. No, not me. Ah. Janu Shuti. Okay. Yeah, Janu Shuti Sensei. Do you want? Yeah, please go ahead. It's actually more a comment. I really enjoyed the lecture. Actually, in the past, I've I've done a small interpretation for, uh, you know, when the samurai movies had come to India as part of the international uh, film festival. And there was a very well-known critic, Thadao Sato uh, Sensei, who had come, uh, and. In that context, I had happened to read Hagakure and uh, uh, Gorin, you know, um, uh, so I really enjoyed the discussion. I really wanted to thank you for this uh, amazing lecture. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if, uh, I think uh, by the time, if uh, somebody is planning to ask something else from the floor, by the time probably I can ask just one quick question. Um, uh, Tanka says is showing his best, probably he has some more questions. So. No, uh, no, 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 I, I don't. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask uh, something, you know, I mean, something probably uh, pretty important and uh, you must have, as a translator, I mean, you must have, uh, 
uh, realized it. Um, I, I, I am interested in translation studies and translation theories and all those kind of stuff, I mean, post-colonial theories and all those things. And one thing, uh, just a couple of years back, I read one book by Talal Asad, he, 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 his secular translation. And uh, he was talking about uh, how uh, the English translation of Quran uh, makes its kind of untranslatability. I mean, he was basically talking about untranslatability things. So uh, what basically his basic argument is, I mean, probably this is something uh, probably related to your thing, because uh, when we are talking about some Bujutsu or Bushido or Budo, right? I mean, martial art, we are basically not only talking about text, we are also talking about bodily practices, right? I mean, hand, legs, actually you are in fact talking about those kind of accents. Accents, no, probably in, in New York case, it's not only accents, probably talking about mental accents actually, right? So how do you, I mean, there are multiple layers of untranslatability working here. First thing is this is a 7th century, 17th century, of 16th century, right, text that uh, kobun uh, and then uh, you, you first you understand it in our modern japanese then probably turkish or english wherever you go that is one layer and another layer is there are bodily practices as well as linguistic practices i mean in the text itself has some certain mental things and probably bodily things do you ever find any kind of problem in in translating for instance or communicating to your audience in some way uh, this, 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 something maybe kokoro no naka ni aru mono toka, atama no naka ni aru mono toka, you know, I'm, I mean, what I'm talking about, not, not only the language, I mean, something which, which is, which is embedded into the language, but it's, it, it doesn't properly fix into other languages. If you ever, there are many, many, many instances that you come across those, uh, troublesome barriers. <laughs> Uh, but as uh, Unita said uh, at the start of her uh, uh, commentary, uh, when you translate, you have to um, uh, train yourself not only in language, but also in the culture, even submerge yourself into the culture, uh, history, history of the period, the way of thinking of uh, the persons who are involved, who are uh, uh, taking part in your story or, you know, uh, plot anyway. Uh, so you, ha you have to know more about the samurai world, how they live, not only the, only the samurai, the, 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 uh, the, the, the priests, Buddhist priests living in his time, how would they think, how would they eat, how would they, uh, what would they wear? I was I was lucky enough because I had you know studied those be just because I, I I'm, I'm curious. So to, to be curious is the uh, uh, strongest weapon of a translator. Uh, the ones that I didn't know, I was uh, ready to learn more about those. And luckily, I had also experienced martial arts myself. I had done in my youth uh, karate, and later on, whenever I was in uh, Japan, I had the privilege to work with. Uh, uh, Koryu uh, practitioners like you know Yaido, like sword fencing uh, and uh, sword uh, uh, art and etc. So I was familiar with the terminology. But the main problem is if I know my own language well enough or not. So it is not uh, Japanese the problem. You, if 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 that's uh, the point, if, if if you're stuck there, you can go into a. a, a um, the pages of uh, a good uh, dictionary or you can ask to an expert and etc but do you know your own language so uh, okay uh, there are many instances that i uh, work like that but uh, once you understand once you digest the concept of what for instance musashi says then you express it in your on your own words the uh, the words coming out of your uh, uh, mind and uh, mouth and pen may not sometimes exactly uh, reflect the word that he or she had used there, but if it reflects the meaning that is used there, then you, you should be content with it. Uh, what I believe is that a good translator should be transparent. When I say this, my students, and I say, well, what do you mean? If you translate it good, did good, then the reader will be reading the words of Musashi. 
Okay. If you are a consecutive translator, then the listeners would be listening to the words of the speaker and will forget about you. So you should not have an ego there. Your 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 business, your your skill, your coup is being transparent. That's that's the way you make a good name of yourself. Okay. Well, that's that's yeah. my. Uh, can I can I answer yeah, uh, about even in Rashomon you have a silence not speaking of anything when Genin changes his mind after seeing that old woman what she's stealing and what she's doing he says only one word Soka it means even I can become the thief or I can do all these things what you are doing that silence is always there in Japanese stories because they think and they don't speak more. They uh, that silence is always there in Gon Gitsune's story. Also, they understand with the action and with this. this so this whole this is the philosophy of uh, I think this Kara Kara philosophy. The emptiness or I think <laughs> uh, we have to read more. And the silence is always there, acting very strongly in Japanese stories. Yes, uh, uh, let me mention that uh, there is this uh, concept of responsibility of the reader, Rest responsibility of the uh, listener. Uh, you know, you give space to your reader for imagining what, what's going on. Uh, that's important. You should also, as a translator, have that in mind, that readers need that. Okay, any, any more questions do you have? Uh, I, I have one more. Sorry, I mean, this is a quick one. I mean, this is about the Turkey Turk, right? <coughs> abandon the abandonment. T no, uh, abandonment of abandonment, yes. Uh, how, how do you pronounce it? Turkey Turk? Turkey Turk. Turkey Turk. Turkey Turk. Turkey, Turkey, Turk. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm <coughs> talking about that. Uh, in fact, it's, a, it's an interesting concept uh, yeah. if you go into it. Yeah, it's 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 there. I mean, it's there in Buddhism. In fact, I, I work on a medieval text called Hojoki, uh, uh, some 13th century text. and. And the author Kamono Choma at the end of the text actually he writes that he could not actually he he detach. I mean, this is about non-attachment, right? So he could not detach yes. himself from his attachment. I mean, non-attachment. Yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, how, how do you detach from your own non-attachment? Philosophy of non-attachment. That is something he in fact also that is quick. I I, uh, I I think I mean this is something kind of you know in inversal ideas which which appears yes. i mean across yes. civilizations for, uh, for that somebody uh, should uh, translate my book mm. uh, into me. japanese yes. right <laughs> i'm telling, telling yeah 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 telling somebody should be there definitely yeah is, is there any any more questions uh, from um, the audience i mean it, this is a, an excellent opportunity i mean uh, i mean we may not have yeah tanka Singh say wants to ask say something uh, just uh, uh, a different yeah, sort of question please uh, am i a historian so you know the, the idea of a samurai she uh, warrior and so forth has changed over time uh, so around the time of uh, nitobe uh, when he's writing bushido there's a certain ideological uh, environment in which he's presenting that argument uh, uh, Musashino seems to come at a time uh, while warriors were actually warriors, meaning they were fighting. There was, uh, and he seems to have a fairly down to earth view of uh, actual fighting. And by the time you get to Hagakure, it's more ritual symbolized, you know. So there's, a, there's that type of difference. Uh, the second thing, is uh, I, I'm not familiar with, with any other culture which has uh, produced so much around uh, the art of fighting, if you will, or using uh, uh, swords and war and uh, so forth as a way of uh, self enlightenment, if you will, as a way of, uh, and thirdly, what again seems quite extraordinary is that Musashino is a warrior and you have scholar warriors in other cultures, you know, intelligent people who do other things, but you know, he has a whole range, an artist, a calligrapher, a writer. Uh, so uh, it's not, not normally something that you would uh, 
find in other cultures. For instance, you've been studying uh, in Turkey, the Janissaries, and the, is there any uh, comparison that you would make? It'd be interesting to find out uh, what the differences and uh, similarities are uh, between, say, Turkey and uh, uh, Turkish warriors yeah. and uh, the Japanese. Yeah. Oh, okay. In uh, India, well, there's some I'm sorry. It's, sorry, I mean, sorry. Not, I'm not saying the first two were just the first two were merely reactions and comments. But uh, I was just wondering, in your when you're looking at uh, the warrior class in Japan and in the role of warriors in uh, the Ottoman, uh, what do you find uh, similar or different? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the first book that I had published was based on my master's uh, research, basically, but I worked uh, more and I published my first book. Uh, it was called the, um, uh, it was about Janissaries, the, uh, the Ottoman uh, warriors, Turkish warriors uh, class during the Ottoman Empire. And uh, it was called the uh, Heart of the Crane and subtitled uh, uh, Janissary Brotherhood and uh, Bektashism. Or Sufism, let's say. So I was I was uh, trying to go into the um, philosophical background of the warriors uh, class in uh, Ottomans. So uh, well, these are, to my surprise, well, people like the book. So uh, uh, for an academic book, uh, it is quite. Uh, it became uh, you know they, they, it became uh, popular in a way. Um, what I realized during that research uh, was that not only in Ottoman context and Japanese, but also for the knights or uh, other uh, warrior classes, for that matter, throughout the history, in various locations, you find this paradox. What paradox? They they have to exert violence use weapons you know kill be killed fight war battles but they want to go to the heaven they want to be uh, uh, you know um, blessed by their god so how will they do it normally not all the religions uh, uh, well, all, all the religions they they they, they say don't do not kill uh, don't do any harm to other people etc even primitive religions uh, but they have to do it that's their profession so what they do is I realize that they they tend to uh, adhere to unorthodox heterodox if you like uh, views of their own uh, religion uh, in Japan, we, we find a tendency towards Zen or Buddhist, Buddhism, but, you know, uh, various uh, different understandings of uh, Buddhism, not the Orthodox most of the times. Uh, I know that it's a big generalization, but it helps understanding. Uh, in uh, For the case of Janissaries, they uh, go to Bektashism and Sufism, because normally uh, they wouldn't live, outlive, uh, the traumas of an open field war, field battle. You know, they, they, and in this Sufism, I found, interestingly enough, I found a teaching, a doctrine saying that the Janissary, if, uh, if they, they're walking on a way, well, that, that's the exact word, the path, the same concept that they use in uh, uh, East Asia path it's called the path a uh, yo and uh, well that was astonishing at the start but then you come what's this path how do they uh, uh, describe this path uh, haji bektash the uh, uh, the founder of that let's say uh, uh, orthodox heterodox faith was saying it is a path with hardships of 40 stations and four basic gates okay those four gates well uh, you would be surprised are called uh, ground water fire and uh, 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 wind mm -hmm. 
And what's the end of what's there at the end of this path? I would ask, and they come up with this answer. Dying is witnessing the uh, beauty of God. You you will uh, get uh, get united with God. You will you 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 have the hallucination, uh, 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 a vision of being separate from God, but it's it's an hallucination. You really was together one with the uh, uh, with the unity of God, and you will go back. You will you will you will be united with God. So. Uh, the the the, the um, let's say the denominate the common denominator between different uh, warrior classes is I believe their view of uh, death. How do they confront with the notion of death? Because that's their business. That's what they do. Uh, for the samurai, Zen would help because uh, death is not an end. As uh, at the end of uh, Musashi's uh, presentation, if you remember, it was saying death is not an end for the art of war for the person who had reached the end so reaching a destination death but not dying continuation this even well that, that that's quite startling to see uh, that even if it's islam you know you find in this sect a teaching of reincarnation reincarnation into the world you know not uh, uh, not to uh, the other world and stay there in your uh, in God's heaven or hell etc. No, in, this teaching says you come uh, as Adam. You had come to this earth as Adam, and then you had changed, transfigured through uh, uh, various generations, and you you reappeared as uh, this Genesee. There are many uh, poems, poetry, a large uh, collection about this transfiguration. Well, uh, that would be a, another uh, subject that I can talk hours about. But wow. uh, please, is it is does this you know uh, correspond to what you have asked or? Tanga Sensei, we can't hear you. I mean, you you are sweet, Sophia. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, that uh, answers my. Question yeah, well, uh, yeah, um, probably yeah. I, I have okay. a last I last one. I can probably. talk for hours. <laughs> May, maybe, but to thank Asensi and uh, Doctor Dal as well, both of you. Actually, this this happened that yesterday. I just heard Inaga Sensei's talk, and today the same. I mean, similar topic. If if I'm not wrong, actually, if I'm not wrong, what I yesterday understood from Inaga Sensei's uh, talk was something you know. He was probably saying that Bujutsu uh, Ajay Ajay. Bujutsu something, you know, to cause harm, the meaning, I mean, Bujutsu uh, having that meaning of to cause something, kill or harm. Uh, he, he, his, he was, his uh, argument was that this whole uh, meaning was probably um, not very old, at least not in, in the Chinese characters. Probably he was saying that Bujutsu might have some other kind of meaning. I mean, this. Uh, I mean, you are talking about Nitobe Inajo and all those people, major people. You know. Is there any possibility that uh, the whole Bujutsu term could have uh, different meaning, not not causing harm in Chinese or East Asian civilization? Maybe ever. Well, if, you, if you look at the character uh, uh, at the very start, when this character was invented or designed, you can see the uh, source meaning there right it's compact it's there there is uncertainty there is uni unification and stopping well how would you understand that hmm. but it, it evolved gradually for martial arts because war is about stopping uncertain situation and uniting people and the resources in order to do that your time effort money people everything together to you can, but it could have evolved into like crisis so, uh, solution solving crisis it might have but it it explains much uh, for martial arts yeah yeah thank you thank you very much i mean probably i i'll talk to inaga sensei once again sometime we can have another session thank you yes, uh, thank yes, us, yes, i'll yeah. be happy yes. <laughs>